All right. Hopefully, most of you already viewed the um, prelude to this video, and you already know what to expect. Um, and you expect something that you don't know. All right. So with that said, let's start from here. Four sixteen. That's the address of this club, Refuge. All right. So we're gonna start from Refuge because this is the club that Zach came out of, right? So we're gonna start from here and we're gonna take the path that he took. And it's a pretty much of a straight path. No cutting corners, it's a straight shot. So it's the first street that he had to cross over. Here's the federal building. Now a lot of you probably wondering why I keep mentioning the federal building. It's just odd to me that this big federal building in this area, all this chaos going around this, this federal building and no police in sight. All right. I don't know how they do it in Chicago, uh, whether they respond immediately to shootings I don't know you know most cops they try to respond as soon as they can to try to catch somebody fleeing you know what I mean hey I, I don't know how they do it in Chicago as far as that goes so that 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 was just on my mind like why no no police presence nowhere in sight around this big federal building so anyway let's move on Now what I want to show you is the fact that even though we had a video presented to us, two videos actually presented to us, and um, a lot of people ran with that video of course because that's the only visual that we have, right? So with that visual, a lot of people just, I don't know, I, I don't know if they just got comfortable with the video so much that they just accepted the fact that that might have been where all the shooting started but what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you exactly where the shooting started and it wasn't at that, that particular scene of that video alright you have three witnesses so far that we know of well that's been circulating the internet these three witnesses um 54 keys was one of the first ones that i seen to show us the statement from the bar manager and then we have the two videos so that's three in the prelude to this video i showed you another uh witness all right, and he was saying that he came around the corner right after the shooting started. Right, well, right after he heard a loud shooting, he came around the corner and he seen people standing around saying that they shot Jake, which we already know that's Zach. All right, he just didn't know no better. He just going by what he heard. So he also made a statement saying that a van passed by. After the shooting, a van zoomed by. He didn't get a chance to actually look in that van to see who was in it or whatever. And so that's that's uh, statement number four. Well, statement number two, witness number four. Well, there's a fifth witness that I haven't been seeing circulating the internet, and that's the witness of the subway shop. There was a guy in the subway shop. He also heard and seen. And actually there was another person, but I don't think they got a statement from her. She may have left after all the commotion or whatever. 
but she was the one that ran in the subway shop and alerted them that they were shooting outside all right now the subway guy stated that he didn't believe her at first and then right after he heard gunshots so we're gonna go go to the statement So here we have the statement of uh, the bar manager, and we also have the statement of the subway shop uh, employee. So starting with the bar manager, he says, let me slide up a little bit. Okay, he said it, 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 it's Denny Friedman. He said he saw the three cars converge on Clark. All right, he saw the three cars converge on Clark. They they basically met up on Clark, which was otherwise empty. Now otherwise empty means that round about this time of night, there's not too many cars just floating up and down the street, parking, people getting out, talking loud, you know music playing stuff like that otherwise it's empty all right then they also go on and say people exited the cars and looked like they may fight that right there i'm gonna get into as well they may fight what caused them to get out the cars as if they was going to fight all right, let's move on. Uneasy, the bar manager said he turned back to 10 to the 5 or 6 regular, uh, regulars still in the bar when he heard gunshots. So he didn't turn away from the door or window. And soon after he turned away from the door or the window and go tend to his customers, Boom, 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 he had gunshots. All right. Friedman ran to the door and dead boated it as the bar's patrons, the, the, the customers, dropped to the ground. All right. So you have the customers falling to the ground. The uh, bar manager runs real quick to go put the dead boat on the, on the door. He don't want nobody running in. And soon after, Check this out. He saw a man walking by holding a handgun. Now, he also states it was just adrenaline. I don't know what that meant. It was just what was just adrenaline. The fact that you ran and put a dead boat on the door or the fact that somebody is walking down the damn sidewalk with a handgun out. Not too far from the fucking federal building. Is that what he meant by adrenaline? I don't know. But anyway. Here we have the subway shop employee. Alright. Around the corner. Hey. This is just somebody writing. Giving it their best. But the subway is not around the corner. It's literally on that same block. And I'm going to show you. Around the corner, matter of fact, let me go ahead and get you a visual right now. Alright. Here is the spot for the uh, the bar manager. That's the spot for the bar manager. Okay. And I'm going to show you the subway shop. Again, I don't know where they get right around the corner from. Maybe that's just how they talk down there. I mean, up there, I don't know. But um I mean, it, it's it's not too far. I mean, it's literally skipping distance.
you can see the sign already matter of fact I'm not even going to go all the way down if you want to zoom in alright so the subway is right there so those two was open that night female runs in let me go back to the statement so you, you won't be word of mouth my mouth it'll be from them Travis Finley was working in a subway shop when a woman rushed in and said she had just heard gunshots seen gunshots or heard gunshots she heard gunshots so where was she coming from hearing gunshots but not seeing gunshots but this was on the same block as the bar manager now my thing is if she didn't see it and she only heard it maybe it was further down the street after what happened in front of the bar but the thing that's going to bring the scene back to that section of the block the statement that's going to bring the scene back to that that section is going to trip you out A woman rushed in and said she had just heard gunshots finley didn't believe her then he heard them so here it is he him now you see what i'm saying so there's a pause in the gunshots and then there's more gunshots so she had time enough to run in and say hey i heard gunshots man they they, they shooting out there and he's like what oh, man. then bye 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 oh now he him so there's a pause between the gunshots all right so let's read further the 20 the 20 the 21 year old Southside native who studies animation at Columbia College told the woman to stay inside the shop while he went outside to take a look so he goes outside now if the commotion is that close to the shop would you go outside it's bullets flying man would you go outside so at this point is the cars further away now are they where Zach ended up at now for him to come outside and not really fear what's going on outside because any commotion that close to me I'm just peeking out the door I ain't going outside bro I don't know where these bullets going at as a matter of fact I'm gonna peek out the door and I ain't gonna stare too long because I'm on ground level just as well as y'all on ground level and them bullets can come and hit me through these windows but he goes outside okay this is the part that's gonna bring the scene back he saw a man right here he saw a man run by with blood on his shirt why none of this shit was in the news reports why wasn't any of this shit in the news reports I guess they say nigga if you want to know go read right well good thing I'm a reader and I don't always depend on video all the time so he also goes on and say he heard a woman scream no 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 now we remember that the no 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 was in the video so it is so that the commotion went further down the street 
So those of you who saying that it looked like somebody was shooting from under those trees, you just may be fucking correct. Because he came outside, no fear. He's not worrying about a thing. He just want to see what the fuck is going on. So evidently the commotion is not in that section between the subway and the bar. It's not in that section anymore. It didn't move further up in front of those apartments and right there where Zeit's car was stuck. So this commotion has moved further up. So after that woman ran in and said she heard gunshots. And then he heard gunshots afterwards. This commotion had been moved up. But somebody runs by. In a bloody shirt. Ain't that crazy? Who was that? That ran by in a bloody shirt. Where did he go? I have a general idea where he went. I have a general idea where he went. Other people have been shot that same day and the previous day. Other people have been shot. I think it was a total of uh, between five and seven people. I could be uh, counting it wrong. Maybe it was between five and six. We'll see in a minute. As a matter of fact, I believe it's in the same article. But this is crazy. Because this guy, who 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 the fuck was he? Why wasn't this assailant mentioned in the report? They just stuck us with this old goddamn video that we see down here. It just stuck us with the little old video and said, let them deal with that. We, 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 got, we got other things to do. Which I'm pretty sure they may be on the case, but then they may not be. So, you know, we as a people got to, we, we got to do our, you know, our, our just due diligence. All right. So we heard the no, no, no. Again, that was further up the road. That was in the video. So we seen the video with that no, no, no in it. But what we didn't see is somebody fleeing away in a bloody t-shirt. So he had to already skip buggy on down the street. Okay, so where did this gunman who walked past the bar door with his gun already out, like what's happening, where did he go? Was he the one under the trees shooting? That's the same side. If he passed by the, the bar door, that's the same side. Let's take a look. It's the same side. So if he passed by the dope with his gun in his hand, he ain't too far away from The last bit of the scene. He's just a skip in the heart. Do you understand? Did he come up the sidewalk and stop his ass under this tree? Because it was this tree. It was this tree where we seen the sparks. It was this tree. Did he come up that sidewalk and stand right there 
and take a couple of more shots. And then on top of that, I want to ask, if so, who was he with? Because he didn't jump in the car with the guys in the Jeep. Remember, it looked like they was getting away. Like, it, it looked like as soon as those spots got ready to take off, them dudes was getting out of there. Like, come on, let's go. Like, they knew he was over there with that gun or some shit. Or the fact that they were trying to get the fuck up out of there before the police come. And this is another thing that I want to say about those two cars. Let me talk to y'all for a minute. I know we want to find a shooter. And we may want to blame the guys in those two cars. We have to look at everybody as suspect. I get it. But my thing is, coming from the statement of the guy coming around this corner, see where this bus is at? That guy that looked around that corner to see what's going on with all that shooting, he stated it was a van that zoomed by after he heard some shooting. A van zoomed by. A whole bunch of gunshots. And then I heard someone screaming. And when I came around the corner, there was a whole bunch of people standing there saying they, they killed Jack. And who's Jack? Do you know who Jack is? I guess that's the guy in the car. And then they jumped in another car and left. The first car, that, when the shooting went flying past that way, it was like a beige van. I didn't see who was in that car. So, are these two cars left to look like suspects? I mean, I, it's just a question for me because I've never seen anybody stay that long at a fucking crime scene when they just got through shooting up somebody. They running around digging in cars and shit. One dude go up in Zach's car. Then they bike track and go back to the, the black car. Then they have to be told, let's go. Then they come along, hurry up and jump in the, in, in, in the Jeep. That's what the reporter said it was, a Jeep. And they damn near took their time getting in then. I mean, it, yeah, they was rushing, but it took them some time. I mean, the dude in, in the red, he jumped out to let them in so he can get in last. Like, what type of shit is that? Nigga, just scoot the fuck over, nigga. It's time to go. So they kind of took their time at this crime scene. I don't know a murderer doing no shit like that. Niggas hitting and getting out of here like that van did. Like like the dude say he seen the van do. Now if it was somebody shooting under this tree. He either had a pass to do that shit. As to the reason why he was on foot and didn't give a fuck. Because he damn sure didn't go from under that tree to that car. And that taxi driver, when he pulled up and biked up, he wasn't worrying about nobody being under no tree either. So did he take a couple of shots and run off? Or was it even someone under the tree shooting? Could it have been a small defect in the video? By it being so blurry. I kind of want to prove that. If it is. So I'm going to be looking into that. But the question is still. Where did that guy. 
walking past the bar manager's door holding a handgun where did he go what did he have on that's another thing I want to know I want to know what this motherfucker had on so for those who don't believe that the shooting actually started between the bar and subway I want you to see something all right here the police got this section wrote the fuck off he don't have just one tape he got that motherfucker designed like it's everywhere he sectioned off this part for a reason now what I haven't done yet is I haven't put the microscope or the uh, okay that's exactly that, that that's exactly what I thought it was those are markings for shells bullet shells this is the area between the bar and subway this is that area I'm gonna show you This is that area. This is exactly that area. As a matter of fact, as you can see up here, this is July 2017. This is when this picture was taken by Google. If you look here in the background, see this window right here behind him? See the sign next to it? And then there's like a doorway, like this, you know, possibly could be a garage or something. Remember, the double pane windows, the sign next to it, and then there's like a garage, and then there's this. The double pane windows, the sign next to it, this garage. Come on. That's the same area. So, with that being said, and with that being seen, these are bullet shells. That's where the shooting started. That's why the bar manager seen somebody walking past his door holding a handgun this where all the shooting started right here right here right there too bad we didn't get a video of this That's crazy. Now, what I have not seen is shell casings on the other end where Zach Carr was stuck between the tree and the, 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 uh, the light pole. That's what I have not seen. And I've searched and I've searched and you don't get a clear picture like this with casings on the ground. All right. So uh, I'm going to show you a few examples. 
Now at this time We should see Some shell casings By now We should see some Shell casings by now Especially in this area And I never I never thought that The guy that was pointing towards uh, Zeitz Jeep Remember the guy that ran The, the guy that was in the white t-shirt he ran around the car when the black car was approaching him. He ran around the car and kind of like was keeping the Jeep between him and that, that black car as it passed by. Then once it passed by, he pointed towards Zeit's Jeep. I never thought that he was shooting at the Jeep because for one fight that you do not see any sparks. Um, For us to not see any sparks at all, all guns spark at the barrel. I haven't seen a gun that don't. You know what I mean? Um, maybe it is. I always dealt with big guns, so maybe maybe it is guns that that don't uh, spark at the barrel. If it was, it was a small caliber, and I don't know what kind of damage he expected to do with that. Also, not only that, I didn't see any sparks, but it's the fact that. Two of your men ran to this Jeep. One walked off with the white t-shirt. The one that was in the red t-shirt or red and white t-shirt, he was still in the car. So why would I shoot in the car when my man's is still in the car? I'm putting his life at jeopardy now. Just to shoot at somebody who's already shot. You feel what I'm saying? Zeke is a big dude. If Zeke was still alive, like alive, live, like where he can move, nobody was holding him in that car. He was getting the fuck out of that car. You understand what I'm saying? His side of the car was not damaged to where he couldn't get out. It was the passenger side that was damaged. Alright? So... I highly doubt that this dude was shooting into this Jeep, no sparks for one, but also shooting into this Jeep where his mans is still in that fucking car doing whatever it is he's doing. He could easily hit his own mans in the head. You see what I'm saying? I wouldn't have even tried no shit like that. Because now, it's going to be some beef between me and this man now. Like, dude, while we riding in the car, I'm going to be like, cuz, straight up. Like, um, what made you shoot in the car while I'm in this motherfucker? That would have been a question. Like, what the fuck? I mean, I understand you happy to be a shooter, nigga. But, damn, nigga, I'm in the fucking car. You see me run up in this goddamn car. You knew I was there because you was looking at me the whole fucking time, bent over in this fucking car. Why would you shoot in this fucking car? So I highly doubt that this dude was shooting in the car. You don't see any bullet holes on that side. The bullet holes is on Zach's side, especially that windshield. Okay, so... Let's get to this guy who ran by the subway shop in his bloody shirt. Where could he have possibly gone? Where did he go? Well, in order for us to at least get a possibility where he could have went let's take a look at some things what's this south loop I think it's in the same article where it shows all the guys some of the guys who were shot 
Is it this article? No, it's not this article. All right, it's this article. And I believe that's the last section, so I'm gonna go up. Okay. As a matter of fact, that's the article that pops up once I click that on. Um, once I click that link. At least it's one of the shootings. All right, here we go. Come on. Come on. All right. So at 9.33 p.m., It says two men were shot. Uh, one of the victims, 23 year old, was taken to a hospital, but that's that's not the area. A 20 year old woman was shot. So we're not looking at that. We know that's not a a man. It says a woman. Hey. Anyway, let's go down here. Is that the same thing? Yeah, the same thing. Come on. Come on, here we go. All right, now right here it says a man was shot in the head while driving. That's Zyke, South Loop, 1.30 a.m. All right. Then just under it, now check this shit out. This the shit that trips me out. Just under it, they made sure that they put this one right up under Zykes. Another 19 year old man was shot at 1.33 p.m. in Humble Park, police said. He was standing outside when a car drove. I know y'all looking at the 1.33 p.m. I get it. Check this out. They make mistakes. Um, when a car drove up and someone inside fired shots at him. As you can see, it says right here, fired shorts at him. So that's what I'm saying. They make mistakes. So let's go to the article where this links to. Now do you see what I mean by they make mistakes? At 1.33 a.m. is what they meant. I mean they didn't even spell shots right, they spelled shorts. So anyway, here we go. A 19 year old man was wounded in the shooting early Wednesday in the Humble Park neighborhood on the west side. He was standing outside when a vehicle drove up and someone inside began firing shots. That's the same thing that happened to Zyke. As they say, a car pulled up and they fired shots from inside the car. Zyke was at 130. This guy was at 133. Humboldt Park is really not too far away from the South Loop. Now watch this. He was taken to Stroger Hospital where his condition was stabilized, police said. He was taken to Stroger Hospital. 1.33 a.m. He was taken. By whom? The ambulance? We don't know that. 
But this is what we're going to do. First of all, we're going to see how far of a distance is Humble Park from South Loop. Then what we're going to do is we're going to see how far of a distance from Humble Park to uh, Stroker Hospital. Then we're going to see how far it is to Stroger Hospital from South Loop. Let's go. Because I think this is the guy that ran. I really do. Let me see what this is. Y'all give me a second. All right. I think this to do with that rant. Somebody might have picked them up or something. I don't know. I think this will do with that rant. So y'all see what South Loop is, right? God feel come on all right this is humble park this is struggle hospital this It's South Clark Street. As he was running by, could he have gotten a ride to the hospital? Could have someone looped around, picked him up, and took him to the hospital and dropped him off? Like where did he come from? Why didn't he stay in the car with the other guys? If he was riding with them. Why didn't he stay in the car with the other guys? Why is he running back towards Subway? And the rest of the party went further down the 700 block of South Clark where Zach Carr ended up at why is he running a total different direction from them did they shoot him so you got two people on feet one walking by the bar with a gun in his hand the other running on the opposite side running past the subway with a bloody shirt these two are not a part of the party that we seen on the video running around Why aren't these two getting in the car with these guys that we see on the video? You see the twist that this just took? It's some bullshit going on that they ain't talking about. And that's the reason why that dude was so sincere about people blaming him for shooting his homeboy. Like why would y'all blame me for shooting Zyke? That man ain't with that shit. And I understand people do some crazy shit sometimes. But goddamn, I ain't finna put my enemies 
logo on the back of my motherfucking back. I don't give a fuck what kind of case I'm fighting. I'm not finna put, nigga, I'm stuck with that shit for the rest of my motherfucking life. I'm not finna put a nigga I just killed on the back of my motherfucking back unless I'm just that damn ruthless. Like that dude got that shit on the back of his back where it's no room for nothing else. You gotta be cold hearted and ruthless to do some shit like that. I'm not saying Chicago don't have no cold hearted ruthless niggas. Cause that's, that's why we covering cases like this. Because of cold hearted ruthless ass niggas in Chicago. I get that. But what I'm saying is, nigga you stuck with that tattoo for the rest of your fucking life. So maybe this is the reason why that dude was so sincere about people blaming him for that shit. And then also you have to understand, the mother made a statement. She said, she was talking about Zyke. She said that Zyke got this dirt ass dude, put some money in his pocket, was trying to help him out. And this dude set her son up, basically. I'm paraphrasing, but that's what she's saying. And it goes for the... And uh, she goes further and say, um, you can't hide too long. Well, this dude with Zack TV's logo on the back of his back, he ain't hiding. We seen a video of him standing right there with the police. The po I, I mean, he, you know, the police was talking to all of them, telling them, you know, you have to uh, sort of celebrate behind the gate because of so much that went on. You know what I'm saying? And um, the dude was just standing there on life, everything. He ain't hiding. So she couldn't have been talking about him because he ain't hiding. And he got family coming from out of town or wherever the fuck they came from. They coming to, you know, help mourn a lost one. A lo I mean, a, 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 a lost loved one. You know what I'm saying? So, I, I don't see her talking about him. We can't take the things that we want to see and just automatically just jump on that as if that's what that is. We have to start taking our time with things, man. And stop jumping on things so quickly. It's not always about trying to be the first on things and i'm not saying that that's exactly what certain people do but what i'm saying is we have to start being patient with this kind of stuff man because this shit is deadly already as it is you see what i mean so back to this here so this 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 19 year old that got shot supposedly in Humboldt Park made it to Stroger. But do you see the timing? 1.33 a.m. And let me tell you something. A lot of times when people tell lies, they put a little truth in it. Because in order to tell a lie, you have to tell the truth also. Because that lie is based off the truth. Always understand that. Anytime you wanna you wanna peep if somebody lying or not, always remember. In order for them to lie, that lie have to be based off the truth first. Or else there will be no such thing as a lie. The truth is always there. Or there will be no such thing as a lie. There will be no reason for a lie if there is no such thing as a truth. So the truth is always there. What happened? It's the first thing. What didn't happen. Is going to be created. Off that first thing. So a lie is always created. Off the truth. This person. At 1.33 a.m. Shots fired at him. From inside of a car. Exactly. Around the same time. Zyke was being shot at from inside of a car 1.30 a.m. same morning Humble Park Stoga Hospital now look at the distance from south 
uh, South Clark Street, which is the South Loop, Two Struggle Hospital. It's just the same fucking dude who ran past the subway and ended up at the hospital and probably just told a big ass lie. Didn't want to be uh, put at the scene. Is there some truth to his statement that he got shot in Humble Park around the same fucking time frame? And the same type of incident. Come on, man. And just for the record, um, Zach didn't go to Stoga. We we already know where he went. He went to um, I forgot the name of that damn hospital. Some hospital up here in this area. They they took Zach way up here. They didn't even think to take him this direction. They took him this direction. All right. And if I'm not mistaken, I think I have that route as well. Cause I yeah, yeah. So they took Zach this direction to Northwest. Memorial Hospital or Northwestern Memorial Hospital. Alright. Man, I tell you, boy, it's. it's woo woo. You hear me? Woo woo woo. It's crazy. This shit is wild, man. This shit is wild. So more and more this shit is starting to look like a fucking hit. And everybody's pinning the murder on the two cars that was at the scene. Another thing I want to get at is how this Caprice was smashed the fuck up. And I want to know. I did say I was going to go back to um when a, when the bar manager said that the guys got out as if they was uh was going to fight now i'm wondering is it safe to say that it's a possibility that there was a car accident and someone took that time as the perfect opportunity to execute Zach. Now I'm not saying someone from the same party of those three cars. I'm saying someone in a van who were probably watching. And and and, and you know what? I I, I want to put this out there too. All this shit that's going on. I'm starting to strongly feel that there's some kind of gangster police ass motherfucker running around doing some shit because it's already it's already known that police officers do go in I'm talking about these renegade police officers they do go in these neighborhoods and kill uh, a, a, a lot of these people also it don't always be gang on gang violence you see what I'm saying a lot of time it be these police officers these renegade police officers shooting and killing some of these gang members just to keep the violence going you see what I'm saying so is this a, a, a work of hire to kill Zach to keep the violence going because you know that this would be something huge or is this a hit from some other uh source you feel what i'm saying did someone take this as a perfect opportunity because it, to me it looks like a car accident that may have taken place um we we, we don't know why they stopped in the middle of the fucking road like that like what made them okay listen this is Zyke alright 
We all know that Zach interviewed niggas in the fucking hood. We know this, right? But what we also know is Zach started getting away from um interviewing dudes in the middle of these rough neighborhoods. He started getting away from that, right? And so to say that is to say that Zyke was aware. I mean, always been aware of his surroundings, pretty much. You know what I mean? Always been. I mean, for somebody that the last that long had to be. You understand what I'm saying? So Zyke was aware of his surroundings. So the thing is, if Zyke felt like he was in danger, and I'm not going to say that um you know because these was his close friends or whatever. You know that that may not have been a possibility that these were some of his close friends that did something to him or whatever, which I have already stated that I don't think so. But at the same time, I know you know those things happen. But what I'm saying is, Zyke, if he felt like he was in danger, I don't think Zyke would have stopped on this empty fucking street where there's hardly nobody even walking up and down like. Everybody who's like people that's in that bar, those people are in that bar, they are put up. You understand what I'm saying? They ain't hanging all out so with their cup in their hand, talking to socializing. Them people are in that bar. Same with that subway shop. Wherever that lady came from, she ran her ass inside that subway shop. You understand what I'm saying? Ducking for cover. You feel me? She ain't see shit, but she heard something. And it was loud enough for her to say, well, fuck that. You see what I'm saying? So, majority of these people, all of these people actually was put up. Except for, and, and, and we don't know who else may have been walking around or whatever. But what I'm saying is, this is not a crowded area at that time. At that time of morning. It was not a crowded area at that time of morning. Do you strongly think if Zach felt like some niggas wanted to jump out and fight with him, do you strongly think? That he would have stopped right here. I don't think so. Not somebody like Zach who's been around, seen, heard, and know what time it is. Zach would not have stopped right here if he knew some niggas wanted to fight. He know this is uh, Chicago. He know that some people are out here waiting to hurt him. He know that. So. If he knew that these niggas was ready to fight, you think he would have stuck? You, you think he would have stopped right now? I mean, your honest opinion. For a person who's very aware of his surroundings, of what the fuck goes on in his city, do you seriously think this man would have stopped right here if he knew these niggas was up to trying to fight him or trying to fight somebody that was in the car with him? You think that man would have stopped right now? At that time of night? Trying to play Mr. Billy Badass? I don't think so. I don't think so. But what I do think, because I don't see how the fuck this Caprice got so bashed up in the back like that. Let me show you. Do you see that? So, look how so smashed up his car is, you know, look at that, and look at the front of that car. Was it a car accident? A car accident used as an excuse or used as a perfect time to do some shit. You know what I mean? Like, damn, look, they just got in a wreck. Let's get them. 
Let's get them. It's perfect time. They all got out the car. It's perfect time. Like, did they jump out like, oh, man, god damn, man, what you drunk, bro? I don't know. I, I don't think it's like drink. So, I, I, I don't know. You know what I mean? It's just, I don't know. I, how did Zyke car get so messed up in the front and this dude car got so messed up in the back and then the passenger side of Zyke's car with the driver's side of the Caprice is in coordinates with an accident you see what I'm saying amongst each other Or could have this car now let's 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 get a good perspective on this could have this caprice not have been could have this caprice not belonged to any one of those dudes that jumped in that Jeep could they have been going in the caprice to see what was in it could have this caprice been the one that may have been in front of Zach shot through his windshield Zach hit the gas rammed him in the back the guy found a way to swerve over just enough for Zach to keep zooming because Zach may have been hit as he was driving, right? As they say, Zach may have been hit as he was driving, but hit from the front by this Caprice. Like, you know, like a, a nigga leaning out the car and boom, boom, boom into the windshield. By Zach being hit, his foot hit the gas, boom, smashing the back of the Caprice. The Caprice pull off. By Zach's foot, it smashed on the gas. It continues to move forward. Now the dude in the Caprice is trying to ram Zach over. So he smashes the Caprice into the car, which is the reason why the uh, the, the wheels on both cars are smashed like that and Zach end up getting pushed over into that pole or did he even hit the pole because the way that his car it uh, Maybe he did hit the pole. But look how his car is though. His car is nowhere near the pole. You see that? See how much I can anybody could walk through that. How is that hitting the pole? I don't see him hitting the I see him hitting the curb. He was still living at this point. So maybe the car got It's just kind of strange how that car is there in that position, but they say it hit that pole. I don't see it hitting that pole. Cause why not the headlights? Why why the headlights are not busted if he hit that pole? I can understand why the um the 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 the, the bumper looks that way because it possibly rammed into the caprice and I can see why the bumper is smashed on the side like that because the caprice and the Jeep ramped it into each other from the side also you know like wheel to wheel front wheel to front wheel then he runs into the curb and maybe the curb is what stopped the car And by Zach still being alive, 
just wasn't fully conscious maybe when he hit the curve his foot slipped off the gas for it to come to that halt because I don't see it hitting that pole I just don't see it and maybe that Caprice after they hit Zach's car uh, front wheel to front wheel maybe it just wasn't drivable enough to keep going or they did get out and shoot a couple more times but there's no bullet shells on the ground for them to to have gotten out and shot again so maybe they just jumped out the car and just hauled ass just ran and I don't know man if so where did they go did they get into that Jeep? So these are perspectives that we have to look at. Those kind of perspectives we have to look at. But we also have to go back to this fucking van. Where the fuck did this van come from? Was it uh, uh, just some innocent people just happened to be coming down the road? And gunshots went off, so they got the hell up out of there. You see what I mean? Because that Caprice being smashed up like that, it has to be some answers to that shit. Because why would both wheels? on the same side be smashed like that why would they ram into each other like that and that takes force that takes for somebody to actually yank the wheel you have to actually yank the wheel to cause that that's not just a I'm hit my foot is on the gas heavy and my car just verge over or merge over into your car that's not that type of uh, uh, damage that's a uh, I'm slamming I'm, I'm, I'm yanking my wheel and, and, and slamming my car into your car that's what that is that's that's what kind of damage that is but again the bar manager says three cars converged on clock So, even though we do have stronger clues to what actually happened, it opened up more questions. Or should I say, continue the original questions as to what party does this Caprice, does this Caprice belong to? You know what I mean? But again, who were these two men on foot? One passing by the bar with a gun in his hand, the other running back the other direction past the subway with a bloody shirt. Why didn't they continue to join this party, um, these party of people at this scene? One flee on foot away from the scene one walked that direction with his gun in his hand but never got in the car never got in the jeep and this so-called van is the actual suspect that's the question those are the questions And those are the questions that we have to work with.